Welcome to a new guide on this channel and this one is the Vertigo VSM3. Now this is not a review, it's a deep dive guide about the plugin. So we're going to talk about all the different controls that you have available right here, how they work and how we can get something cool out of this. Now everything is in tiny chapters, so if you look at the description or the timeline, you can jump to a section or skip the ones you don't want. Now the first thing we need to talk about is how this section, the second harmonic for crusher works and the third harmonic center, center blender works. Now we are not going to get into that in how, what is second order and third order or even or odd. You can go to the web and just find that information. Um, you know, th there's a lot of information how that works, even or, or uh, even or odd or second and third. Now, since this is a family show, I'm going to try to make everything super visual so you can see what's going on when you uh, when you turn the knobs and we can uh, be able to see it right here. So I'm trying to make it for beginners and advanced. So the second harmonics, uh, they sound warm and they get more, they have a more rounded sound. Now, the third ones, they sound a little bit brighter, uh, but cold, they sound a little bit cold. Now, some people say uh, that the second order harmonics are bad. Uh, or maybe the third ones are bad. Uh, this depends on what you want to do, you know, how you want to color the sound. It's not that they are bad or they are better. It's just, you know, they color the sound in a different way. And on this plugin, we can do both. That's, you know, the main purpose of the plugin. And at the end, we have the mixer right here. So we can blend what we can do on the second one and we can, uh, you know, we can do on the third one. Maybe you want a little bit more of the second one or you want a little bit more on the third one. And you're going to be able to kind of a mix and blend. Okay, so we have a sine wave playing on the 261 hertz. This is a C, a C note. Now on Bitwig, which is the platform I'm working, everything is a stereo. So if I bring a stereo split right here, this is just going to do a different thing on the left and the right. But the, at the end, since this signal is mono, we're going to be able to do the same. Now the trick, what I want to do, is I want to show you what's going to happen on this stage, which is going to be left, and what's going to happen on the right. Since we are doing the same thing, I want to see... Uh, I'm going to go to reset in both. I want to see what we are doing uh, on the second one and see what we are doing on the third one. And we can, we're going to be able to see it right here. So for now, I'm just going to open this and maybe put it right here. So I'm going to turn off the sine wave because it's just a little bit annoying. So we're just going to see what's going on right here. So how the plugin works uh, is that uh, right now, let, let me say I'm going to turn this one off and I'm going to turn this one off. Notice that nothing happens right here. We get no information and it's because this one is going to disable whatever is that you're feeding to it. Once you enable, it's going to do something. So if this one is off, of course, you're not feeding anything to it. Now, then you have your two stages. You have your second and you have your third. So this uh, switch right here that looks like this one works the same way. So if uh, this one is off and this one is off, you're not going to uh, you're not going to do anything. You're not doing anything on the second or in the third one. You're just going to get our simple tone. Now, uh, remember that this is a distortion uh, saturation or saturation unit. If your signal is too hot and you're just do, using a stage, it's just going to drive a little bit more, right? It's just going to do a lot more right here. So always remember that when you're feeding something to it, you need to trim or adjust your input. Right, so I'm going to go and reset both. I want to see, I want a visual representation of what we are doing on the second one and what we are doing on the third one. So in this case, since we are on the initial patch, I'm going to disable the third. I'm going to turn the third one right here. And on this one, I'm going to turn the second one. So on one side, we have the second uh, harmonic and on the other one, we have the third one. Now, the trick is that what I want to do is that on this one, we can listen to the left and the right and we can A, B and see what's going on on the left and see what's going on going on on the right. I want to kind of, again, make everything super visual because if you're a beginner or you're an advanced, everything is just, just, you know very visual and easy to understand. So the blue one is going to be the one at the top, right? The second harmonics and the uh, orange one is going to be the third one. So we can easily see what's going on right here. Now it's just easier to spot. Now the second uh, one is going to be focusing more on the second one right here, right? It makes, makes complete sense. 
Then the other one, the third one, is going to be going down on the second one, but it's going to go up on the third one. And notice that there is a relationship on the third one. It goes down, up, then down, and then up, and then so on, and so on, and so on. Now, we're going to be focusing more on what, what's going on right here. Now, as I drive it, and for now, I'm just going to be going to um, about maybe 60% or 60-something on both. Uh, notice that the relationship starts to change a little bit. Now, the second one, of course, is a bit more prominent right here and then here. And, but, you know, keeps kind of this curve, this tiny, you know, tiny curve right here. It's not the same way as, as the third harmonic section. And this is because uh, it depends on how much you drive it. They work differently. So if I drive the third one, notice that uh, if I drive it, it's going to go up, up, up. But we kind of keep the same relationship. We get all the, all the odds right, here, right there. Uh, let me go right there. And if I go bottom, you know, we, we kind of keep it the same. Now on the other one, it's going to be a little bit different. If I drive, drive the second one, notice that the order and how this is shaped is going to just change a little bit. Notice how much is changing. Now it looks more like, like, the, like the other one. It is because, of course, we are crunching this. Now if I do less, now this is going to start to change a little bit more. Now the second is going to be a little bit more prominent and then it goes down on this once. So uh, how much you're driving on the second one is a bit more kind of a, let's say, uh, reactive to the sound that you're doing. So you're feeding to it. So the drive, the drive is super important and it's going to change how the whole section, the whole stage works. Same for the third one. If I go really down, it changes, but we kind of keep the same relationship. But that, that's fine. So again, I wanted, I wanted to do just, just to make everything super visual. Now that we know at least how the second one and the third one, you know, how they look, I'm going to close this and I'm just going to bring one single instance of this. Right, so we have one single instance right now. We are not splitting. We have one single plugin. And I'm going to do reset and start from the beginning. So we need to learn what all the other things are doing because this ones, this ones right here, are kind of the start, uh, the star of the plugin. Now, of course, since now we know how the second one and the third one, they how they work, we kind of uh, uh, at least predict what is going on right here or, you know, what are we going to be getting? Now, uh, we need to talk about this. Now, of course, since you're feeding some sound, in this case, it's going to be a, just a dumb sine, sine wave. Uh, of course, you drive it more. Notice that these two lights are changing. And, you know, on the level section, they are changing. So this light, the first one, is a representation of how much gain or the sound that it's going into this stage. And the second one is going to be the level... Uh, or how much signal it's going out of this stage. So if I go all the way down, we are pretty much l going low in volume. Notice that it goes it goes lower. So whenever you're feeding some sound, let me just do less gain, maybe something like that. And I'm gonna adjust it right there. And the level, notice it's just, you know, a little bit off from this one, the second light. And this is because you need to adjust the level. So the idea of this is that you can need to match the lies, the lights, so you can match the different levels. If I go up and drive, this one is going to be, you know, really, really loud. So I'm going to need to level this one to get closer to whatever sound we have right here. So that's the whole idea. That's why you get the lights. But essentially, this level is so, you know, you can level and just lower the volume. All right. So back to reset. Now we need to talk about the this section. And this one is going to be this is what is called the input filter. And this is where the magic starts to happen. Now you have different bands. That's pretty obvious. You have a track, you have a full, you have a high, the high band, the high mids, the mids, and then the lows. And you could assume that, of course, what this is going to do is going to focus the uh, saturation or the distortion on maybe the low bands or the mid or the high mids or the highs or maybe everything. And you are correct. That's what it does. It's going to focus uh, on your sound, whatever it is that you're feeding to the stage. It's going to focus on that band and then do the distortion. Now, the confusing part is going to be the full and the track. What is the difference? So, okay, so when you're working in the track mode, when the sound goes in, it's going to get distorted, it's going to crush it, right? And then the sound goes out. Now, you cannot blend the harmonic, you know, the, the amount of distortion you're doing with the original signal. You cannot make a blend. 
Now on the other modes, you can blend the amount of harmonics that you're doing, you know, how much you're crushing the distorted, the process signal with the unprocessed one. And this is why you get a THD mix. So this is total harmonic distortion mix. So since it's a mix, it means that you can make a mix between two things and it's going to be a mix between the clean signal and the processed one. Now, the difference is that when you're in track mode, you don't have a mix. You cannot use this control. Uh, track, it means that it's going to be processing everything and whatever you get is going to get distorted and then go out. So you cannot really make a blend of your harmonics. Now, in the other case, I'm going to go and really crush it so we can really see the difference. Now, the full it's going to work pretty much. There is a tiny difference. And, you know, when we change it, uh, notice that it's changing right there. The full works like the track mode. But the difference is that now you have a blend uh, or you can select a blend uh, between the unprocessed and the processed signal. So you can go down on the harmonics that you're creating right here. And right now we are in full. But if I go down this uh, section, you know, it's going to go down. So you can select how, you know, how much you're going to be getting on that part. And it's uh, something very, very useful. All right, so that's, that's what it means. Now, of course, on the other ones, uh, let me just maybe go back to track. Now, no, again, notice that the, there's a difference between them both. So it's because they target different, uh, different frequencies. Now, the track is going to target from, uh, I believe it's 10 hertz, which is super low, 10 hertz, to up to 20 uh, kilohertz, which is pretty much the full spectrum. Now, full is going to target from 120 hertz, which is going to be around there, up to 20 kilohertz, 20K. So there is a tiny difference. Now, the other ones are a little bit different. The highs, the high band is going to target from uh, 4K to 20K. The high mid one is going to target from uh, 800 to 4K then the mid is going to be 120 and then 1.5k and then the low is going to go from all the way you know down from 10 hertz to up to 120 hertz now if you're asking why do you get different bands all right so let me just give you an example let's say that you have a bass right and you want to add a little bit of saturation but you don't want to saturate the whole bass maybe you just want to saturate maybe the lows so you're going to be targeting the low frequencies because maybe your bass has a lot of high frequencies or let's say mid frequencies. So if, if you crash the whole thing, it's going to crash everything. But maybe you just want to crash the lows. You have to distort the lows. So right now, if you target the lows, I'm going to go up on the sine wave. That is if, if I go right here at the top and I'm, you know, driving this like crazy. We don't get a lot. And I'm going to disable this one right now. So we are doing just this one. So if I go uh, to the high frequencies right here, we just don't get a lot. You know, we get pretty much nothing. But as I go to the low band, since this one is distorting the lows, is going, we are going to be getting a low, a lot more on the low band. That's the plan, right? And same with backwards. What if your bass has, uh, you know, some cool high frequency, mid high frequencies that you want to crush, you want to distort. So then you're going to be selecting your high frequencies. If I go to high, the bass section stays, uh, stays untouched until, of course, maybe I'm going to go right there. Of course, I'm going to go to the mid highs or right there. And we're going to be getting a lot more harmonic distortion. And when you work on the full high and the other bands, you can make and you can select or make a blend between the process and the unprocessed one. So it's a pretty versatile plugin if you think about this. And I'm going to go back to reset once again. So notice at the bottom, you have a, a mid and a side and a left and the right. Now this plugin is very cool. It's very cool for mastering purposes. Of course, you can use it on standalone tracks, uh, but it, you know, it shines on uh, ma mastering and, you know, tracks where you have a lot more content. And it's because you can work on the mid and the side. So let's say that your bass, just to give you an example, is that you have you have this bass, right? And the bass is stereo. You have a lot of information on the sides. Well, you can target the lows and then go to the mid side and just crush your lows right here. And you're going to be getting, you know, 
a little bit of harmonic distortion on the low side. But then maybe you want to do a little bit of the highs. So you can go to the, your third harmonics and target maybe the highs right there, right? And uh, of course, you're going to be able to target maybe the side information of your bass. So you're just now saturating or distorting different parts of, of the same sound, but on a different way. And again, this the plugin is just very versatile. Okay, so back to reset. We know what the drive is. Oh, and once we learn what this does, you know, the second, this section, the other one, this one works exactly the same way. The only difference is that, of course, this is going to be reactive to the third and this is going to be reactive to the second one. But the controls, they work, uh, they do the same. They have the same purpose. All right, so we know this one is going to drive. This one is going to level whatever it is that you're doing right here. And I can just turn this one off. And then, of course, you can go to track, which is uh, no blend. And then you can work with the different bands where you have a blend of the total amount. Let me just go higher on this one. The total amount of our harmonics that you are doing right here. But then you have this funny shape. Now, the shape works just like the like this one. But there's a tiny difference when you work on track and you work on the on the other bands. So the shape, what it does is just going to cut. And it's because, and right now we have a single tone. If I go higher, of course, I'm going to do a lot of drive. This is going to get super, super bright. So what you can do, and for now, I'm just going to go to track. You can just cut the high frequencies because again, it's going to get really, really bright. So you can tame those, you know, high frequencies a little bit more. So if you think about this, this is just a, a high pass, a low pass. Pretty, pretty easy to understand. Now, of course, when you work on track, uh, you cannot do uh, you make a blend or use a blend over the THD, the total harmonic distortion. But when you work on the other ones, you can. So what's going to happen when you cut frequencies? Are you cutting, cutting, uh, cutting the whole thing or just cutting the, the, you know, the process signal? And when you're on track, what's going to happen with the shape? What, what are you cutting? So when you're on track, uh, you don't have a blend mode. Everything that goes in is going to get distorted and go go out. You can still use the shape, but it's going to be cutting everything, right? Pretty much everything because you don't have a blend. Now, on the other modes, uh, there's a tiny difference. And for now, I'm just going to maybe go right here. So on the other on the other modes, when you, of course, cut the uh, highs, it's going to be cutting the processed signal, not the original signal. Maybe I'm going too high, maybe there. So if I do shape, this one is cutting the harmonic distortion, this total harmonic distortion, the process one, but it's not cutting the original one. So if I go right there and I do cut, notice it's just not cutting anything pretty much on the original signal. Now, if I go to the track, notice that uh, this one is cutting the original signal. So yeah, so that's the main difference between shape. You need to be aware what you, you're uh, doing right here. If you're on track, it's going to cut pretty much everything. And if you're on the other ones, it's going to cut the processed signal. And on top of that, you have a soft and a hard style. Let me maybe put it right there. And uh, I'm going to go to track. So you have a soft, it's just going to hit it softer. And the hard is just going to hit it harder, right? Very simple to understand. Okay, so let's talk about the THD mixer. And I'm starting right from the scratch. Um, maybe going to uh, 200 and something-ish. I'm going to really drive it so we can see what's going on right there. And I'm going to really drive this one. So uh, what you can do, since you are uh, processing the second and then the third, you have two different stages. You can process them in parallel or serial. And they are very, very different. When you work in parallel, the sound, the clean sound, my pure test tone, is going to go in. Uh, this one is going to process the process, the signal, and it's going to go out. And this one is going to be processing and then go out. So at the end, they will meet and the sound goes out. But this one, whatever the amount of distortion we're doing on the second one, it's not going to feed to the third one, right? And if we do so, and let me just do something like that. And if I really drive it right here, maybe I'm not going to drive it a lot. This one, if I go to serial, <laughs> you're going to get a lot more. Because we are distorting, and then the same sound that it's being distorted is going to get distorted by this stage. That's what, what's happened when you work with serial, right? It's in the serial, in a chain. 
Now, when you're working working serial, you cannot make a uh, you cannot use this knob. This does you know it pretty much disable. Now, when you work in parallel, since you are uh, kind of a you have a single path right here and a single path right there, you can make a blend or select which one you want more, or just maybe make a blend between the second one and the third one. So let let me give you an example. Let's say that we are focusing on the lows on the second harmonic, right? And on this one, we are doing it on full. But maybe I want a little bit more of the second one. So I'm going to be leaning towards the second one and doing less of the third. Or maybe I want more of the third and less of the two. Or maybe right here you're just working on highs. And again, you're going to get more of the highs or just, you know, more of the twos. In this case, we are not getting anything because uh, there's nothing going on right there at the bottom. So same thing right there. Maybe you can go do low on both and you can audition or just check how you know what do you want if you want more of the third or more of the second it's just a blend control right and it's pretty pretty useful so i'm going to go back to reset and you have the monitoring section and this one is really important because since you're going to be doing something on the second one something on the third sometimes it's really hard to hear what is going on or which one is doing that so what you get is uh, you can audition what's going to happen on the mid or what's going to happen on the side. And this is the overall sound. Everything uh, after, you know, after it's being processed. But at the bottom, you get the second and you get the third. And this works pretty much the same. So if you're doing some driving on the second one, let's say you're processing on the second one, you can go here and this is just going to let you listen what the second stage, the second harmonic, to, harmonic section is doing. If you go to the third, it's going to just show you what the third one is doing. If I maybe go to no drive, uh, <laughs> it's showing you what it's going on on the third. And if I go to the second one, it's just going to show you on the second one. Now you can do second and third at the same time. And what this is going to let you, uh, you know, show you is the process signal. If you're doing a blend, for example, it's not, it's not going to give you that. It's just going to show you what they are doing. So you can listen how much, uh, you know, how is distorting and then, you know, adjust the levels or maybe adjust the drive and maybe cut something or so on and so on and so on. So we're going to we're going to really use it in a second. So then at the end, then the final thing that you get is going to be the output. Now, since you're driving, this is going to, of course, go up uh, right here so you can level your volume. Right, so let's bring a baseline and see how this works on a single on a single channel, you know, in single sound. And this is the vibe of this channel. Uh, what I like to do, I like to give you a more kind of a visual a representation of all the different knobs, knobs, and what this uh, what this plugin does in, uh, in a nutshell. So you can predict or expect what it's going to happen when we move the knobs. Uh, on some other channels, some other videos, what they do, they play something, and you're going to be listening to something while learning the the, the controls. And sometimes it's just, you know, not that easy to follow. Uh, but now you know what to expect when we move a knob, right? That's the whole idea. That's how I like to do things. Okay, so I have a, a dumb bass right here. Now, of course, the signal that is going into the plugin is going to affect the sound. If I turn this off, notice it's changing. So, yeah, the, the amount of. Uh, the amount of uh, the signal is just going to be affecting the stages. So if you're doing too much, maybe you're going to need to trim your input. Something like that. Maybe not too much. There we go. Now, of course, now you need to decide what well, what are we going to do? Are we going to do the lows or are we going to do the highs? Well, in this case, I'm just going to be focusing on the second one. Since this is a bass, maybe we can focus on the maybe the lows or the mids or the low mids. So I'm going to be maybe going right there. Now, of course, we can drive it. And we can really hear the drive. Right. Cool. Now, right now, we're just doing a lot more right there. So I'm just going to level it down just a little bit. And if I turn it off, we can really hear the difference. Right. So I'm going to be using this soft one. And I'm going to be focusing right now on left and right. Later, we're going to do mid side. Now, remember that when you are working on this modes, you can use the THD mix and you can maybe cut a, a lot of the high frequencies, a lot of what, what's going on right here. Notice that there's something going on right there. 
So in this case, I'm just gonna be cutting a little bit of this because the original sound has some, you know, bright, very bright harmonics. And if I turn this off, it sounds very different, right? Maybe we can level it down a little bit more. There we go. Really, really cool. So let's do a tiny bit. Now, of course, the bass, this bass um, has a lot of high frequencies. And we can see a, a bump right here that we can really cut with, uh, you know, an EQ. But in this case, I'm going to be using this section. And in this one, I'm going to be focusing maybe on the high territory or maybe the high mids. And I'm going to be driving. Right. Cool. Of course, it's going really loud, so we're going to need to level it down. And maybe we can hit it harder. Notice that, again, the chain sound really changes. If I turn it off, we get a lot more, right? So, of course, you can go really crazy and do a lot more and you're gonna be entering into the more kind of a <laughs> distorted, distorted sound. But in this case, I just want to do a little bit, just to show you that you can do uh, just a tiny bit, just to get a little bit more. Right. Now, the third one and the second one, remember that they work different. And in this case, I can shape this one a little bit more. Now, of course, it would be easier to maybe turn this one on and off and try to hear what's going on. So remember, you have the monitoring uh, section. So if I go maybe and do it like that, I'm going to go and listen what we are doing on the third. So this is what we are getting on the third, on this section. This is why it's so useful and important. You're soloing whatever it is that you're doing here. You can really hear that it's crunchy and we have a lot of highs. So. Maybe we just can cut a little bit of what we are doing right there. Right. So then what we are doing on the second one, of course, is going to be the lows. So I'm going to go to the second one. We can do less and we can decide if we want to do more. Right. So that's pretty much the whole thing. You're just going to be working with the two stages then auditioning whatever it is that you're doing on the third, the second one, if you're using them, and then the second and third. And when you go to off, of course, you go to the full. Really nice saturation. Now, remember that uh, the third one sounds very different from the second one. So you can make a call and just decide what you want to do on this one. Do you want more of the what you're doing on the sec on the second one, or more of the third one, or maybe a blend? In this case, maybe I want a little bit more of what we are doing on the third one. And if I go off. bit more right just a bit more aggressive right so very very simple to use right now now that you know the controls we you know what you're doing and we, you know what we are doing and how we are just you know able to process this on a very easy way okay so let's do it on a whole track right so something that has a lot more information than just a bass now i'm going down in volume right here because the track uh, is a free track that you get from youtube uh it's uh, it's pretty loud yeah so if you feed a super loud signal of course this is going to start you know distorting way too much right now it's off i'm going to turn it on and of course we are doing a lot and we are on the default patch. And this, the track sounds really cool. Okay, so let's do a little bit of processing right here. Because it's, again, it's just a little bit too much. I'm gonna leave the input where it is. Now remember that we can toggle between the mid and the sides. So maybe that's what I want. I want to process the mid and the sides. Now this one is going to take care of the high frequencies, and this is going to take care uh, or the, uh, take care of the lows or the mid frequencies. All right. So I'm going to, for now, turn this one off. This one off. And I'm going to go to this one and work on the mid side. And immediately notice that the sound changes. Of course, 
you need to use good headphones uh, or maybe good speakers. Okay, so I'm gonna be working on the mid side. Now I'm gonna be working maybe uh, going to the mid section and I want to distort, get a little bit of drive right there. And then of course I need to level this down. So I'm gonna bring it down and remember that when you work like this, you can audition what you're doing. This is what we are doing on the second one. Now maybe it's too bright, just gonna cut though that one because we want to focus on the uh, kind of a lower energy. And I believe that's fine. So this is what we are doing on the mid side. Now on top of that, remember that on the monitoring right here, you just can go and audition what you're doing on the mid. That's what we are doing right now. If of course I turn it off, we go back to fault. Now I'm gonna go back to default and back to default and turn it on. And I'm going to be toggling this off and on. And as I said, we get a lot more energy on the mid to lows. Now it's very subtle, of course. Now, since we are working on the mids, what happens if we wanted to work on the highs? I'm going to go to the sides on this one and I'm going to turn it on. Now I want to drive a little bit more, maybe something around there, and I want to focus on the high energy. Of course, remember that we can focus it there and see how much we are doing. Maybe bring it a little bit down and hit it hard. Oh, and notice that we get a lot more. Right, so if I check both, this is what we are doing. We can just hit it a little bit more and see what happens. Maybe it was too much. Now, I'm gonna go back. So, we are doing, uh, we are uh, saturating or distorting the mid and the sides. I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna turn it back on. And you can hear the difference. Notice that when it's on, the, uh, the mix it just opens up a little bit more. It's a little bit more static and stale. We get a little bit more of that bass and the high frequencies on the sides. Yeah, that's cool, man. Off. Now, of course, you can go a lot, a lot more aggressive on this one. Let's see if I go more drive, more, more of this. I'm gonna need to trim this down. And I'm gonna do more on this one. And if I turn it off. So you can use the plugging on you know this fashion just to do a little bit of the of saturation on the sides and the mids and use it on a more mastering kind of a kind of a deal just to get a little bit more and open up your track uh, a little bit more. Right, so that's it. So hopefully you learned the controls and you learned how to use it and now you can use it on your tracks. Now, of course, if you like this one, uh, remember to like and subscribe and uh, check the links on Patreon, me, uh, the links on the description. Maybe you would like to buy me a coffee. Well, you can go to PayPal, you can go to Patreon. You have a lot of ways uh, to buy me a coffee. If you cannot, you know, you cannot afford it. That's fine, man. That's not why, why I do this. Okay, so hopefully uh, you like this and uh, see you on the next one.